Hello. So as many of you know, on February 2018, I will be going along with my church to Mexico, um, to Tijuana, Mexico, in order to minister out there and to, you know, serve like Jesus did. And we'll be doing some construction projects and helping out in the ministry. Um, and also talking about Jesus to people. And I thought, how um, sad <laughs> that I'm going to be going overseas to um not overseas but yeah actually it's a different country <laughs> to talk about jesus yet i have neighbors right around the block people that i know that i've probably never spoken to about jesus people that i've never presented the plan of salvation to and so for the past few days i've been thinking of different ways of evangelizing and of course there are many things that i can do i can go out in the streets and just talk to random people i can go to door to door um, I just don't kind of want to get arrested right now, but I can go door to door <laughs> soliciting um, and I can talk about Jesus that way. But um, I think that perhaps one of the most effective ways is simply through social media. I mean, there's so many things that we do with social media. Why not tell my family and friends about Jesus through social media? So I decided to do that today. I think it's so important that you know that your life here on earth is probably about 60 to 70 years. This is your life right here. It's probably like this long, 60 to 70 years, maybe 80 years. If you're really lucky, maybe 90, maybe 100, you never know. But this is how long your life is here on earth. Your life in eternity is, imagine this just never ending. <laughs> eternity is so much greater than our short life, lives here on earth. Yet we spend so much time with this little piece of it that we forget to prepare for the rest of it. All this is left, yet we never, not all of us, but many people don't even take the time to think about what's going to happen when your day comes. Nothing, is, nothing in life is guaranteed except for the fact that one day you will die. One day you'll either die or Jesus will come and get his church. And unfortunately, so many of us, people in our generations, are not thinking about this. They're not considering the fact that one day they are, they are not, they are mortal. You're going to die. One day you're going to die. And um, I just want you to take a few minutes to just reflect on the fact that you need to invest time in what's going to happen afterwards. You need to think about what is the philosophy or what is a the theory that you've made up in your mind about that. What's gonna happen when you die? Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe you're gonna come back as an ant? <laughs> do you believe you're gonna come back as a king? What do you believe? And above all, what is that belief based on? What are you basing your theory on? Are you basing it on what people have told you? Are you basing it on the scriptures, on the Bible? Are you basing it on what sounds good to you or what makes sense to your human knowledge? It's so important that we, as young people, especially in our, this generation, that we stop and we think about that. We think about the most important thing, the longest period ever, which is eternity. Um, and today I challenge you to think about that, especially as Christians. Sometimes, um, and that's what I wanted to bring this video on, is on the Bible. You know, we look at the Bible and we say, well, I like this part. I don't like this part. I think the Bible is partially true. Well, this part sounds right, but this one doesn't. So this is right and this is not. We can't do that. You can't do that. Um, many people don't, many Christians don't even believe in the Bible. They say it is anti-science. They say, they say there is no proof that God wrote it. They say that it's easily dismissed, that it's full of contradictions. And if you believe that, then... Um, I don't know what God you're serving then. Um, the reason why we know we're serving God, as in Jehovah, as in the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, is because of the Bible. So if you don't believe in the Bible and you are a Christian, what are you basing your belief on? Based on what? Based on what people have told you? You cannot discredit the Bible and say that you are a Christian, that you are a believer in God and Jesus, because the only reason we know about him is because of the scriptures. Um, there are many things about the Bible. Number one, that make it real, that validate it, is the fact that the Bible is a miracle. There are 66 books in the Bible that have been written over a period of 1600 years. It's been written by 40 different men. Um, some of them were doctors, there were fishermen, there were shepherd kings, educated people, uneducated people writing it. Um, it was written throughout three different continents, different people everywhere. There's a huge variety of subjects I'm talking about. It talks about the origin of the earth. It talks about creation, sin, love, marriage, history, um, the church, government. It talks about so many things written in different places, 40 different men, 66 books. Yet the entire Bible has one central theme, 
one central theme, which is just God, his redemption for this world, Jesus Christ. Isn't that crazy? You and I can't agree probably on one thing. <laughs> Yet 66 books, all these men, they were able to agree, compile this book, which in my eyes has no contradictions. And if you find a contradiction, give it to me. I'll try to Google it <laughs> and I'll show you how it probably does not contradict itself. Um, you always have to look at the context of things. I think it's amazing. I completely think it's the Bible is a miracle. I believe it is inspired by God. And if you are a Christian, I pray to God that you believe the same thing. And you don't just believe it for one part of the Bible, but you believe it for all of it because the Bible really is a miracle. Um, another thing that validates the Bible, and it, it's important, is the miracle of it being preserved for so long. This book was written thousands of years ago, thousands. Um, there's this guy called Voltaire, and in his day, I'm reading it, he said, in 100 years, the Bible will be a forgotten book, only to be found in museums. Well, 100 years later, <laughs> Voltaire was dead, and um, they had actually, his house had been purchased by Geneva Bible Society for the printing and distribution of the Bible. See, the book is an, the Bible is an ancient book. It should have stopped being sold or it should have stopped existing a long time ago, yet it's been preserved. It's still being sold. It's still the number one selling book. I think that in it, in it of itself is a complete miracle. The fact that the Bible is still out there even after all these years. Listen, all these books that we read in today's days, all the purpose-driven life, all these great books, people in 100 years, they're not going to remember these books. Maybe one or two copies will be sold. Just how things work. We think come and things go. But the Bible has remained. And um, Psalms 119.89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. No matter what, God's word will remain. Um, I also wanted to point out the scientific accuracy of the Bible. <laughs> This is something people are like, well, science and religion are opposites. No, they are not. Me personally, I believe that science is evidence for Christianity. There's so many things out there that prove it all over the place. Um, if we look into it, we'll see that science usually, not usually, but many times, does not contradict the Bible. It actually is evidence for it. Um, something else that I wanted um, to point out is the prophetic accuracy, which really, really amazes me. So... In the Old Testament, there are so many prophecies about Jesus and about what's going to happen when Jesus comes. And then that book, which is written thousands of years before, then a thousand years later, we get Jesus actually coming, which, by the way, there is evidence that there was a man named Jesus who walked the streets. All right. Um, if you don't want to believe in Jesus, that's fine. But as a history major, I can tell you that there is evidence that a man named Jesus walked the earth. Now people will say he walked the earth, but he didn't, you know, do all the miracles he did, even though there were witnesses. And that's fine. You don't have to believe in him, but you have to admit that there was a man named Jesus who walked the, the earth, and people said that he did all these miracles. People said it, even though you might not believe it, but you can't deny history. And now, these prophecies were made about him in the Old Testament, and they all came to fruition. Just to name a few, um, Isaiah 7, 14, Old Testament. Thousands of years, well, I don't know, it's thousands or hundreds of years before Jesus. He said this, he would be born of a virgin. And in Luke 1, 7, New Testament, it happened. All the people don't want to believe it, but they say it happened. Micah 5, 2, it says he would be born in Bethlehem. Well, according to Luke 2, 4, that happened. Genesis, Genesis, first book in the Bible, 49, 10, that he would be born of the tribe of Judah. Surely enough, Matthew 3, 3, that happened. Psalm 78, 2, that he would speak in parables. Matthew 13, 34, that happened. Um, what else? Let's see. There's Isaiah 53, 3, that he would be rejected by his own. Hey, in John 1, 11, that happened. Um, Isaiah 53, 7, that he would stand silent before his accusers. Well, in Mark 15, 5, that happened as well. So all these prophecies about Jesus came to fruition. Um, unfortunately, the Jews, many of the Jews still to today's day, don't accept him as their Messiah because he was not an earthly king, and that's kind of what they were expecting. However, he meets all the requirements as your Savior. And um, family and friends, I really hope that, you know, you realize that how real God is in our lives. You cannot just pick parts of the Bible and say, call yourself a Christian. You have to accept all of it. Um, otherwise, how do you know God is real? If you just make up your own God, you're just taking parts of it, and that's called idolatry. You're making up your own God. Yeah, you may be basing it off some facts of the Bible, but if you're not taking all of it, that's considered idolatry. You, are crea you have created your own God. You've created a God 
that is kind and merciful and you call him Jesus, but your God accepts fornication. Your God accepts hatred. Your God accepts adultery. That's not God of the Bible. And those are just some of the sins that are mentioned and called out um, in the scriptures. You cannot just take some of it. You can't. You can't do that. That's considered idolatry. You are making your own God based on your own philosophies. And it's sad how sometimes we, and I say we, we think we're more just than God. Well, I know better. The Bible says this, but I know this and this. God is the standard of goodness. God determines what is good. See, we are evil in our own ways. God is the one that has set the standards. We cannot set our own standards for goodness. Um, I say, in my opinion, don't choose your religion based on tradition. Look into it. Like I mentioned, your life is like this and eternity is like this. Don't go by what others say. This is very important very very important and it's important that you invest time in it don't spend more time planning retirement than you do planning your afterlife and the only way you're going to be able to choose your beliefs or decide what it is that you actually do believe is by actually studying the scriptures if you are a christian of course study the scriptures don't go by what others tell you i grew up a catholic my grandmother was a catholic i went to catholic church i was baptized and everything and as i grew up and i started reading the scriptures i didn't agree with what was being practiced and i decided that i would be a christian i'm not shunning down any religion i'm just telling you that i felt it to be contradictory to what the scriptures were teaching me so i decided to do my own journey i prayed and i told the holy ghost holy ghost guide me i want to just do what the lord wants me to do and the holy ghost led me as i was reading these scriptures the scriptures are not hard to read i believe they're written at a sixth grade or eighth grade reading level so they are readable you just have to invest the time invest the time in your future invest the time in your afterlife your eternity is very important and today i challenge you to open your bible open it don't be a Christian because your parents were a Christian. Don't be a Catholic because your parents were a Catholic. Don't be a Muslim because your parents were a Muslim. Open, 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 open the scriptures. Um, the Muslims, I, I know they probably won't pick up a Bible. They'll probably pick up their Bible, but maybe you should try the Bible. <laughs> I love you guys, and um, I just want you to know that it's important to me that you are you do go to heaven. It's important to me that I address this topic with you because if no one has told you, God loves you. And the reason why he created Adam and Eve, the reason why he created us is because he wanted to fellowship with us. See, God didn't just make us to worship him. No, he has angels in heaven that worship him day and night. All day long they cry, holy, holy, holy is the God almighty who was and is and is to come. He has worshipers. He created you and me because he wanted to fellowship with us. He wanted to share his garden but we rebelled against him. See, we wanted to know more than God. We wanted to be greater than him. Sounds familiar? Reminds you of the story of Satan? Satan was an angel up in heaven. He was, in, it was, in, he was with God, but he wasn't happy. He wanted to be like God, just like we want to be like God. And you see, Satan got cast down from heaven and it was done for him. We got kicked out of the garden, but we still have a chance. You still have a chance. You can still make it to heaven. God is willing to save you. Though Satan... And his, and his fallen angels, they just want to grasp you so they can, you can join their party. They just want to destroy you. That's why the snake was there in the garden, tempting them and making sure that they fall. They don't want to burn in the lake of fire alone. They want you to join them. Yet God, God sent his son Jesus as your savior so that you were, you, you're not just cast down and that's it. No, no, no. There was a plan of redemption. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. You no longer have to be alone, separated from God. There's no need for it. God wants to fellowship with you. He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want your religion. See, religion is just us trying to get to God, trying to be holier than thou. No, no, no. I'm a sinner just like anybody else. I try my best to honor God, but I'm a sinner just like everyone else. He preached religion, not, I'm sorry, he preached relationship, not religion. Relationship, fellowship with God. Go ahead and pray. And when you pray, don't look at it as just, oh God, I gotta ask you for a million things. Look at it as though, God, can I conversate with you? Can I talk to you? Can we have a conversation as we walk along the garden? Fellowship with your Lord, fellowship with God, and ask him to reveal things to you through the scriptures. Because the more you read the scriptures, the more you will know God, and the closer you will be to him. And you will have a relationship with him, and you will overflow. So today I challenge you, open your scriptures. All the truths are revealed in there. 
So I pray to God that this has been a blessing to you and that you will take on the challenge of opening your scriptures and taking some time to consider your afterlife. <laughs> Goodbye. God bless you all.